how to use process of elimination if you're down to, let's say, 50-50. Let's say you've got answer choice A and answer choice B, or answer A and C. Okay, just try to think all of the reasons why A could be right, and then look at C and think of all the reasons why C could be right. And if you can only think of one reason why C could be right, but you can think of a couple of reasons why A is right, just bet on A and just go on. Just be confident, guys. Be really confident. I mean, if you're going to be wrong, you might as well be wrong and be confident about it. That's the way I look at it, okay? Life is too short, and you know, the, the time on the test is going to fly by. So if you're going to be wrong, at least be wrong with confidence. You know what? You just got to say at the end of the day, you know what? I don't know if it's A or C, but I think A is probably the most likely to be right. And just put A down and move on with your life and just hope that you, you hope for the best, really. That's really my best advice for the whole GED test for questions you're not sure how to do. You just, you know, once you get in there to take the test, there's no point in worrying about your score. There's really not, guys, okay? That's one thing for all test sections. It doesn't matter if it's math, language, arts, or if it's social studies or science, you know? The time to worry about your score is not when you're in there taking the test because so many, so many, so many people, yeah, you do always have to keep positive. So many, so many people have told me that during their math or during their science or whatever it is, they thought that they were gonna fail. Like the whole time that they were taking the test, they literally just sat there and they thought, you know what, I'm failing this test because they think there's so many questions that I have to guess on. There's no way I'm gonna pass this. And then you know what, sometimes they end up passing. So when you go in there to take the test, you know, it is stressful. It can be scary. And you know what? It can be anxiety provoking. And I know it's easy for me to just sit here and say that, but it really is the truth, guys. Like, you know, once you get in there, you know, take deep breaths, go slow, and just don't don't stress out about your score. You just have to do your best. Focus on one question at a time. Get one question right. And after that, you, you know, do your best to get each question right. Okay. And don't spend too much time on any one question. If, if, You've been on a question for a minute or two and you're just stuck and you don't know the answer. Just pick whichever one you think it is. Go with your gut. And if you, your gut's not even telling you anything, just pick an answer, mark it. All right, use the mark feature, move on and come back to it later if you have extra time left because there's gonna be a mix of easy questions. There's gonna be hard questions and medium difficulty questions on your test, okay? Unless you know everything like the back of your hand. There's gonna be questions that are easy for you and questions that you can figure out. And there might be some questions that are gonna go over your head that you have no idea how to do. That is just, that's just the nature of the beast, folks. That's just, that's just how it goes down on these GED tests. And unless you've literally just taken a book like this, a Kaplan book, if you've literally just taken the time to just ingrain every single little possible thing in this and, and you just ingrain it all in your head, which it's just, you don't even need to do that. That'd be way overkill to pass. But unless you've done that, there's going to be some stuff on your test that you don't know how to do. And that's just normal, guys. They're there to test you. The whole point of the test is to test you. It's not there to give you guys a bunch of easy questions. There's going to be some easy questions. And the harder that you work and the more stuff that you master, I'm not telling you don't master the stuff in this book. All right, get a book. Or if you're not using a book, go on YouTube. However you're studying, learn as much as you can. But at the end of the day, you've just got to accept that, you know, unless you've been studying for a year, okay, there's probably going to be some stuff you just don't know how to do, and that's fine. You don't have to get every question right. You don't have to know every single little thing. You don't have to master every little thing. Now, the more time you put in, the more stuff that you learn, the higher the likelihood is that you pass. So I'm not telling you don't put work in. I'm not telling you don't put effort in because it's not going to be easy. All right, so don't get this don't get this twisted. Don't get this confused. What I'm trying to say here is that at the end of the day, guys, very few people feel like they're 100% ready to take the test, okay? A lot of people, they sit there in their car in the parking lot and they're scared and they're freaking out because they don't know if they're ready and they don't know if they they know enough. And I've heard so many stories of people who got in there, they took the test, they didn't think that they were ready. They just didn't think they were gonna pass. And you know what happened? The whole time they thought they were failing and you know what happened? Somehow they still got a passing score and at the end of the day, they come and they say, I have no idea how I passed. I had to guess on so many questions, but still I passed and you know what? The reason that happens is because the more you study, the more time you put in, the luckier you're going to get. I think that's a famous quote. I have no idea who said that. Somebody famous or successful once said something like, the harder I work, the luckier I get. And that really is the theme of the GED test, guys. That really, that is like a really a big take home message that I want everybody to get about the GED is that the harder you work, the luckier you are going to get. And, and that's how it does seem. All right. Go talk to people who, who were taking the test and felt like they were failing and then ended up passing anyway. Okay. Talk to people like that a lot of people it happens to them they're, they're scared they get in there and they feel like they're failing and somehow they still it still ends up being okay 
Now at the same time, sometimes it doesn't end up being okay. Sometimes people go in there and they think that they're failing and they, they say, you know what, man, I'm guessing on a lot of questions and they end up failing. It, it does happen, guys. So I'm not telling you there's no guarantee. If you get in there and you just don't know how to do a lot of questions, you might still end up fail. There's no guarantees in life. That's just life. But what I, my point here is that once you get in there, once you've made the decision, you've scheduled your test and you've already gone in there and you're taking your test, what good is it going to do you to sit there and worry about your score? What good is it going to do you to sit there and worry about how well you're doing? Because I'll tell you what, when you're taking your test, it's probably not going to feel like you're doing that well unless you're just really crushing it, which I hope you guys do. But a lot of people, while they're taking their test and they're seeing questions that they feel like they don't know how to do, you don't want your, your confidence to go down. So really, at the end of the day, if you're gonna guess on a question, just guess and just say, you know what, I don't know what the answer is, but this is my best guess and move on to the next question. Get on to the next question, get on with it. Don't lose your confidence in the middle of, of, of your test, guys. When you go into your test, just you gotta really just try your best and there's no guarantee, but what I'm saying here is that it doesn't do you any good to sit there and worry about whether or not you're gonna pass, all right? The time to worry about that is, you know, there is really no good time to worry about that. You're either going to pass or you're going to fail. But during your test, if you sit there and worry about how well you're doing, you, there's no there's no good that's going to come from that. I mean, you can worry about, am I going to get this next question right? Just focus on the question that's in front of you. If you can't get that question right, guess, flag it, and then or mark it, use the mark feature. If you have time at the end, you'll be able to come back and you can sit there and rack your brain and try to figure it out. But it, you know, you may have time or you may not. Go after the points that you can get. Go after the easy questions. Go after the questions that are medium difficulty. There's gonna be some questions where you're like, at first you might not know how to do it, but if you rack your brain and you sit there and you try, eventually you're gonna figure out how to do it and you're gonna get that question right. Spend your time on those questions and spend your time on the stuff that's easy. Don't spend all your time trying to figure out stuff that you have no idea how to do. Like for example, if you've never studied triangles before and you get into your test and you get questions about triangles on your test, don't just sit there and try to figure it out on the test. Guess and move on and then at the end of the test if you have time then go back and figure that out. But the time to figure the stuff out is right now while you're practicing and while you're in a safe place and you don't have a timer ticking and your score doesn't matter right now when you're practicing. That's the time to figure this stuff out. If you get into your test and there's stuff that you haven't ever taken the time to learn or figure out, just guess and then go after the stuff that you know how to do. And then if you have time after you've answered the easier questions, then sit there and by all means try to figure it out. But for the most part, like, you know, it's just there's no point in stressing out about stuff if you don't know how to do it on the test because there's probably going to be some stuff on your test that you don't know how to do, some questions that are going to go over your head. You only have to get about half the questions right on each section and you're probably going to pass. So same with the math. There's 46 questions on math. Get about 23 right, you're probably going to pass. Same with RLA multiple choice. Get about half those questions right, you're going to pass most likely. Okay, and there's not all questions are worth the same amount of points. So it's kind of hard to, to really give the strict figure or to really give like a strict number of questions that you have to get right to pass. But usually it's about half the questions. So it's like, that gives you a lot of room for, for questions that you might have to guess on. So, so like I said, usually about half of the questions is what you need to get right. It could be more, it could be less, because not all questions are worth the same amount of points, but that's a great general rule of thumb. You just have to get about half those questions right, guys. All right, and like I said, the more you study, the harder you work, the luckier you're going to get. It really is the truth with the GED test. It really honestly is. Okay, so let me catch up with the chat here. That was my little rant here. And I am gonna have to take off here in a second, but let's see. I really think I'll film out. Yeah, and so you do have to be positive. And so it really, at the end of the day, you need to think positive, but you do need to learn the material. So I'm not telling you, oh, just go in there and guess and like, you know, it's gonna be okay because it might not be okay. But what I'm telling you is, you know, you gotta prepare and study and work hard and do your best to learn the stuff. And then once you go in there, if there's questions you don't know how to do, which probably will happen, just guess and don't worry about it. I'm not telling you don't worry about it, just go in there and guess. I'm telling you study, work hard, do your best to learn as much material as you can, and then once you get in there, don't worry about it. If you see stuff that you don't know, then guess. So really, you do have to be positive and you also have to work hard and and you know then then it'll come together it really will i mean and if you fail math you fail math you wasted time you wasted money and it sucks it hurts but you know what you guys are all strong you guys are really tough you guys have been through stuff in life a lot of you i mean i don't know about you guys here but i've heard from other people on the chats that before are just telling me about stuff that they've been through in their lives that i'm just like you know it really is amazing what what some of you guys have been through um and by you guys i just mean gd test takers in general um, you know, some things. And it's just like, really, I mean, if you get knocked down by a math test, you guys are strong. You'll pick yourself back up. It does suck. 
you are wasting time and money and it does hurt. But at the end of the day, you're not really wasting your time and money because you're going to learn from it. And you know what? I mean, it might hurt, but you know what? You guys are strong. You guys are all tough people. You guys are going to pick yourselves up. Even if you do fail, you guys are going to be able to pick yourselves up and move on and persevere. I mean, I, I really get that impression from everybody on here.